welcome to the third part of this tutorial series. Um, now it's time for scattering our terrain and I've been thinking for a long time if we will do it with our own geometry node system or if we will use our free scattering plugin. And finally I decided to use the free scattering plugin from Grassbolt called Gscatter um, because we will also use some free assets from them and you can directly download uh, them over the plugin interface which will make our life much easier and we will also use some cool functions of the plugin like the proximity function the camera culling function which i will show you later and we can also easily use proxies uh, with the plugin or change the viewport density which will make our life much easier Especially if we work on huge landscapes, it's quite hard without these functions and it's not so easy to achieve them with our own geometry node system and I don't want to make the things too complicated. So first go to grassworld3d.com and click on download for free. Um, you first have to sign up but believe me it's worth it and you only have to type your mail and a password. If you have signed up then you will see this interface and here just click on the newest version and download it. And to install it just go to edit, preferences, install and then go to the path where you have downloaded it and click on install add-on. Then we open the sidebar with N and go to Gscatter. And under download free assets and environments, you can find every asset you can download for free. Um, in my case, I've already downloaded everything, so it isn't shown here anymore. But just click to the single assets and then click on download. Uh, you don't need the environment asset. It's more for um, forest and for smaller scales and and um, we really want the single assets. You don't have to download everything, just um, that what you want. If you have downloaded everything, then just click on the emitter, select the terrain, and then click on the asset browser icon. And here you will find everything you have just downloaded. Um, we start with the yellow oat grass. We will take all five um, to get a good variation in our grass. But we start with the first one. Then we have to set the level of detail to uh, two because zero is the highest and uh, we have quite a huge landscape and it probably would burn your PC down and uh, you don't need it. Um, so uh, yes, we can say now scatter selected and wait a bit and here you can see the first problem our viewport is very slow even on a very good pc and um, so the first thing i suggest you is uh, to go into solid mode because normally it performs much better uh, than the material preview for scattering assets and the second thing is uh, to use proxies uh, at the moment. So the proxies are here, just click on it. And as you can see, now it performs much better. Um, if you have complicated objects and huge landscapes, it can happen that your PC crashes if you don't use proxies at the beginning, because sometimes the distribution um, density is too high uh, for the start or whatever so I always suggest you to start with proxies first and uh, it's quite easy you just have to go to edit preferences and uh, search for the uh, gscatter add-on and then activate uh, use proxy on new systems yeah so uh, your PC won't crash. Then we get a bit closer to the foreground and as you can see the proxies are just low poly objects of the original object. 
Um, and now we go to the optimization feature of the plugin and activate camera culling. So as you can see, everything disappears now. Um, we now firstly go to the camera view and I can't see the frame of the camera. So I go to view, deactivate camera to view and zoom a bit out. And now I can see the frame. And here we move um, the camera quite close uh, to the foreground. And then go to G scatter again, select our camera. And then we have adjust the settings depending on what we set in the camera settings. So here, it is 24 millimeters. Um, this is depending on our resolution. Um, this is cinema scope. Uh, so 21 to nine. And as you can see, it already works quite well. Uh, what is backface culling? Backface culling is, I can show you it here. Um, if you have activated it, um, only the assets are scattered that are visible in the frame of the camera. So you can leave it activated, but sometimes it didn't work so well or an object is quite high and then it also disappears. So for the final render, I wouldn't have activated. And then you have distance culling, which is also quite nice. And as the name says, um, the higher the number is, the higher is the distance of the scattering. Um, if you have the camera quite close to the uh, ground, then you don't have to scatter the assets till the end, especially the grass, because as you can see, you can see them uh, anyways. So. For that, this function can also be uh, very useful. Now that we know our optimization features, I would suggest to just try it out with the original object and see how it looks. So we just have to deactivate the proxies and then we can also decrease the distance threshold for now a bit. And here you get a pretty good impression of how it looks and I wouldn't go too uh, high with the density for now because we will also scatter uh, other assets and we have to look how much we want it in comparison to the other assets. Then we go up again and click on our asset browser and select the other old grasses. We select um, level of detail 2 and scatter selected. Then this one, this one, and this one, so that we have all kind of variation in our grass. And I suggest to also use the dandelions big and here we also say scatter selected. All right. As you can see, our setting from earlier worked. We only get uh, proxies for the first scattering. But if we want, we can just deactivate the proxies here so that we can see the original objects. And yes, it doesn't look so bad for now. Um, we can go into the render preview. All right, then I deactivate scene lights and scene world so that we can see it better for now. And here we go. Of course, if you have additional packages from uh, Grass World or you get something for free because you assigned the first time there, then you can go to the asset browser and install the package here. 
Um, for now, we go to the solid mode again and we will deactivate everything except the first one and we will make the uh, distribution uh, density a bit higher so that we can see the grass a bit better. All right, so what's the problem here? In reality, the grass doesn't grow completely evenly distributed over the terrain. It more grows like in little clumps. We have taller grass, we have smaller grass, we also have parts with dried out grass. And to make something like this, we can just add a new effect layer and choose the noise texture. And now we can just move these sliders a bit and you can see how it changes the distribution. So we make something like this, perfect. The other thing is that we don't want to have anything distributed on the path. And for that, we just select the main curve and we will also make a link copy of it. Um, so right click, duplicate linked, then right click again. Uh, after that, we go into the constraints and select copy transforms. We will select the main path. And this one we call vegetation, for example, or vegetation proximity. All right. And then mm, we go into the modifiers and we will apply a shrink wrap modifier. And as a target, we choose the terrain. And now we can add a second effect layer. It's called the proximity effect layer. And here we can choose our curve. And then we have to deactivate um, use pivots only. And the distance multiplier we have to set to four maybe. And as you can see, it already works quite well. Maybe a bit higher. Yes, perfect. You can also deactivate clear inside object. So it's a bit less accurate, but it's more than enough for what we need and it's a bit faster. And um, now we go to the scaling and we add here also an effect layer. Um, in this case, a Voronoi texture. And with that, we can also change uh, the scaling a bit and get more variation in it. So this looks not bad. All right. Another thing you can do is to change the seed. For that, we go to the distribution tab again. And here you can change it to whatever you want. The seed is basically how the grass is distributed on the terrain. And so you can get different variations of it. And if we have many layers, then it's only important that each layer has a different seed. So if we take for the first layer, seed one, then we can take for the second layer, C2, for example, or everything else one. Now we have to do these changes on the other layers, of course. So we go up and deactivate the first layer and activate the second layer. And under distribution, we add another noise texture and change the values a bit like this. And now we also need the proximity effect layer, but for that we can uh, take the uh, effect layer we already created because it's always the same. Perfect. Now we go to the scaling 
And here we also add a Voronoi texture. All right. Um, of course, you can change the seed also for the uh, uh, Voronoi texture or for the uh, uh, normal noise texture in the distribution tab. But it's totally up to you. Um, as said, the seed of the distribution has to be always another one than in the other layers. Okay, and now it's up to you to make these changes also on the other layers. And I will see you shortly. I've now applied everything to the other layers and also activated every layer so that we can see them together. And now I would go to the optimization features again and change the distance threshold to something like 20 for now and go a bit down. Okay, um, two things. First, we have to scale up everything because it's still way too small. And then we have to crank up the distribution. So here I have the first layer. I go to scale and then under main, I would say two. And then we go to distribution again. And the density, we crank up to 50. All right, uh, so I would make this also for the other layers um, so that you have um, set the scale to two and the density to something like 50. And I will see you shortly. Um, for the dandelions, I wouldn't set the density too high, only to something like 10, I would say. And then we can go to the render preview. And yeah, I think it looks pretty well. Um, I hope your PC didn't get too slow, but don't panic. We need the scattering only for the final rendering. So we can deactivate it again and go to solid mode and keep in mind that you also have to crank up the distance threshold again for the final rendering to something like 100 or higher or even deactivate the distance culling. Now that we have set up our main vegetation, I would say it's time for some trees, rocks and branches. And as you may be guessing, we go to Polyheaven again and select models. And in my case, I selected these trees and these and also these branches and these stones. But yeah, it's totally up to you and you can take whatever you want. Before we append everything, we make a new collection and call it something like extras and then we go to file append and now we start with the trees here you have to take the first collection okay then also the other collections Go back, then all right, then the branches, and also the rocks. All right, now we open Gscatter again. And to make sure that it doesn't crash your PC, I would set the distance threshold to 10 for now. And then we select all trees. If you want, you can change the appearance here, but I leave them as they are for now. Um, this trees and this one, 
and if you have selected everything only select the curves then click on scatter selected it took quite long because the density of the trees are way too high so we first set it to something like 0 0.005 i would say yeah it's really slow okay come on please what the okay and yeah perfect um now we can also disable the proxy and also the camera cutting for now because there aren't so much trees and it shouldn't be so performance intense um yeah perfect now we add also some effect layers here uh, in this case a uh, voronoi texture for the distribution we change the values a bit then we will also need the proximity effect layer all right mm, we can also say um if we click here we make this proximity effect layer unique so that we can uh, crank up the distance multiplier here all right perfect then we go also to the scaling and we have to make sure that it is checked here and then we can um uh, we can change with the influence slider how big is the change between the smallest and the biggest trees and um, nothing changes here um, okay now perfect one yeah i guess this is not so bad then we go into the rotation tab and here is the um, randomize rotation okay is set to one perfect then yeah i think this is nice then we can change also the seed of the distribution if we want to something like this and then there's another little problem because the trees are sometimes too much rotated because of the hills um we can change that by going to the rotation tab and delete the um, align to normal um, effect layer. So we just have to select it and then click on the delete effect icon. And to randomize the rotation now a bit, we can here type something like 0 0.01. Yeah, so that the trees aren't completely uh, straight. Yeah, perfect. Now we will also add a simple wind effect layer. You can find under the rotation tab, effect layer and wind. And here we set the strength to something like 0 0.05. And if I now play the animation, you can see how the trees are moving a bit. Okay but we will only append the wind effect layer on the trees and not on the grass because it nearly uh, triples the calculation time for each object before each render if we want to use motion blur and all the grass particles it would be pretty much one little correction if we go to the scaling tab then I accidentally changed the influence uh, for the normal scale effect layer, but this was wrong. We want to change it for the randomized scale effect layer. If we set this to 50, you can see we don't get these extremely small trees. Now you can also change the name of the scattering system if you want to something like trees 
and don't wonder that the trees aren't shown anymore in this folders because every object we selected for the scattering is automatically moved to the gscatter folder and you can find it under sources. And yes, now it's up to you. Uh, just make the same things for the rocks and the branches. Of course, don't apply um, a wind effect layer there. All right, now we have set up our trees, branches and rocks. And you can now also disable the extras collection because we don't need them anymore. And so the original objects aren't in the path anymore. So we can now make a test render, but keep in mind the landscape is pretty huge and you maybe have to play first with the camera cutting function again and uh, to see what works for you. Um, I have deactivated it for now because my PC is quite powerful. But yeah, you have to look what works for you. I would say let's make a little test render. And as you can see, there's something missing because we need a sky background and a sun. And for that, you can just go to the world settings and under surface, click on color and select sky texture. And now we can close the side panel with N and go to the render preview. All right. As you can maybe remember, we have deactivated the checkboxes earlier for scene lights and scene world. So we have to activate it again. And here we can see our sky texture. And now we can play with the settings. This. I think we can now give it a second try. All right, I think this looks pretty good now and we can end with this chapter and I will see you in the next video.